So how do you determine size with a patient that comes in uh, for breast augmentation? Well, you know, that, that's a whole process. I, when, I, when I see someone in a, a new patient consult, I, I tell them this interview is a process. And that process is trying to determine their vision for the breast. Every woman has a vision for their breast. And some, some know exactly what they want. Some I have to extract what they want. And I use either, it, it, you know, whatever I can, whatever tool I can, either verbal or visual. And it's just not size, but shape. Now today with all the new style of implants, whether you go from moderate profile, to high, ultra high profile, form stable or the gummy bear implant, you have so many choices that can affect the overall shape of the breast. In fact, uh, a couple of years ago, I published a shape classification where one out of five is so natural you can't tell there's an implant, two out of five is natural but perky, three is intermediate, four is round, and five is very round. So uh, I think that's very valuable and very helpful. So, and then as far as the size, I, I use a, a, a technique. I've done 2,500 breast augmentations. Um, you know, you, there's groups. So the small C people say this, I, I, uh, I don't want people to know. I just want to be big enough to wear a t-shirt without padding. I just want to be, uh, you know, look good in a cocktail dress. I want to fit in a bikini. That's all I want. Okay. Medium C people say, I want all that, but I don't care whether they know or they don't know. I just want to be proportionate to my body. And large C people say, I want full sexy breasts. And I kind of tend to discourage D cups. I just think over time they don't, they're not as stable now. So occasionally some woman wants a D cup and they're appropriate. That's fine. That's a discussion again. So I'll, I'll go through that scenario and then we'll look at pictures. And pretty soon they understand, I understand. So you show them other uh, patients. pictures. Yeah. So okay. I have a label, a small C, all these small C's, medium C, all the medium C's, large C. And pretty soon I go, or like going to the optometrist, you click, click, and you click, click. I'm showing them pictures and I'm showing them different roundnesses, like the two out of three and a three out of three. So when we're all done with this process, I might end up with something like this. So I'll show them two or three pictures of what they want. Like, okay, so Mrs. Jones, what I think after listening to you, we're going to go with a medium C, three out of five in roundness. And I'll show them those pictures. And then I'll show, let me show you a few more. I'll show them like a, a two out of five, or I'll show them a large C, three out of five, or a small C, three out of five, or, or four out of five. No, 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 yes, yes, no, no. And after they do that, I have a very good understanding about what shape and size they want. And then it's important that they understand that I understand what so they want. So your judgment about the size and the type of implant will ultimately determine a great result and just an okay result? Absolutely. And so there's more than, because it seems such a straightforward procedure. Yeah, but, out, but there's, more, but there's, there's a lot, a lot more it. to it. And so again, everything is in the details. So once I understand their vision for the breast, that's a huge statement understanding their vision for their breasts. And then I take it to the operating room. Now, in my operating room, I actually have a gel pad. Uh, so their back sticks to the bed. So I, I put a si I use sizers. And I have, I have 100 implants in my OR. So I can use any implant I want, which is a huge advantage. And I'll use sizers. I'll look at them with the sizers and laying down. I'll sit them up. Hmm, yeah, maybe let's try a different size. Let's try a different shape. I lay them down. I sit them up, and that gel pad, they can, I can, on an average really? patient, on an average, on an average breast dog, I'll s sit them up three, four times. On a revisionary, big revisionary case, I counted one of my recent revisionary cases, I set the patient up 15 times. And I can't ima I cannot imagine that a surgeon could do a, a breast surgery, and I hear about it all the time, the anesthesiologist tell me I was at so-and-so's office, they don't even sit the patient up. I can't imagine at, at, at doing a breast augmentation and not sitting up the patient. You know what, they look so much different laying down, sitting up, laying down, sitting up. You have to do that. So this attention to detail. Huge attention to Are you a to perfectionist? I mean, do people say about you, he's a perfectionist, like your employees? I say it about myself. <laughs> I'm a perfectionist. Okay. I, I, so you I think there's a lot of sloppiness going out there? There is, there is. A lot of, surgery. it works okay. It's, because it, to do an okay result, to do an average result, it's an easy surgery. To make it look great, that's a hard surgery.